times, peace be upon them both, because they were both messages of truth and reality. And uh, I have the king of YouTube. This is a, this is the gentleman that introduced me to YouTube. And yeah, he's the author, also the author of Woolly Lynch, which is a great book. The Mark Sims of Viewpoint, he really needs no introduction. Thank you for coming You're on the, the show. You're the man, <laughs> Clifton Brown. I've been trying to get him on. He's, he's on my YouTube website right now. Okay, and he in Australia. I don't know what it is about Australia, but you at the top in Australia and been there for years. <laughs> but uh, tell the people something about yourself. I do a public access show. That's what I do, man. <laughs> I'm a father too, you know, married, and this is what we do. But TV is a hobby, man. You got to have a hobby because if you don't have a hobby, you're gonna you're gonna do something bad. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> as soon as I get rid of my hobby, I probably have to find a girlfriend. See, that's where you see hobby keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> Makes you a good little boy. Keeps you out of trouble. That's right. You know something, man. Um, you in the black. I believe you in the black star program. I used to be, and you go to the high schools. I used to go to the high schools and the grammar and schools and do a, a pseudo motivational speech, a slash, uh, you know, uh, Malcolm X type speech, Ooh. slash uh, Les Brown motivational speech. But I don't do that no more because I'm getting older and the students cannot handle my tough love. What do you mean they can't handle well, your you know, tough love? It's, that's exactly what they need is well, tough what love. Happened, what, no. What what happened is that I'm, I don't have the tactfulness as I once had. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the tactfulness. And the younger generations, they they born 30 years. They're 30 years my junior. Most of them don't have fathers in destabilized neighborhoods. So when I come in talking like somebody daddy or somebody uncle, a lot of students have never heard, not all, mm -hmm. a lot of students have never heard that tough love speech. So they get offended. Now so others would say, Mr. Sims, I wish you were my father. Yeah. I mean, so it all depends, you know, on people's frame of reference and their experiences. Man, you know, as you go through, go, go, go to these high schools, you know what you see. You see young men walking around with their pants down to their butt and cursing in the hallway. Maybe they don't do that in front of you. But what do you say when you're in a room? Them. You know what I tell them? This is this why, why, why I don't have any friends. I tell a student in a minute that the apple does not fall far from the tree. You know, and a lot of folks have never heard, a lot of young people never heard that saying. If, so if you're ignorant, you're talking, you're clowning, you're your pants on the ground, you're cursing with around adults, the apple don't fall far from the tree. And I've insulted them and their parents, but of course they don't have the intellect to understand. I just insulted do you, them. Okay, do you blame, okay, do you blame, so basically you blame, blame the 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 parents for the for the students, not the teachers, because you have a lot of schools that are on academic probation here in Chicago. Okay. Here in Chicago, you don't blame you don't blame the teachers. All of them. Do you blame all of them? It's all of the above. <laughs> if my son and daughter got, got D's in school or even C's, uh -huh. whose responsibility is that? It's mine. It's my responsibility to make sure they do their homework. My, my responsibility yeah. to make sure the teacher. My responsibility to make sure I'm doing my job as a parent. But everybody can't be wonderful parents. Everybody can't be great. And that's where the village comes in. And so what happened in some of our neighborhoods because of integration, well, integration and assimilation, our best and brightest have left us, those of us who still live in Bourgeoisie. the hood. Well, I don't blame them. I should have I should have went to Flossmoor and Madison years ago, but I chose to stay here in the city of Chicago, and many of our neighborhoods are destabilized. And, and parents and people like myself we stay in the house, you know what I'm saying? Because it's because that house almost is like a prison. They well, got so have, many bars around it. You know, it. <laughs> because you have a lot of stabilization, and we know why. We know how to end it. That's why I tell the young people. That I, I, I went to Phillips High School at, last year. It's one of the schools they're threatening to close if they. I think they made an announcement they're going to close Phillips for a lot of different reasons. Well, yeah, that's a whole dissertation right there. But I say, please do not have any children. I became a parent, as I always say. I became a dad in, in uh, when I was 31 years old. I'm a better parent at 47 than I ever could have been at 17 or 27. So at young people, I said, just hold off having these children. Let's calm down. And let me say something about you. And I tell them about age. George Curry, the great uh, journalist, George Curry, from, formerly from Emerge Magazine. Everybody knows George Curry. Okay. Great guy. He was on Reverend Al San, uh, Sharpton's show yesterday on WVON Radio here in Chicago. And he was saying... Keeping he, it real. Yeah, he keep it, real. Uh, George Curry gave a statistic, and I, I hope I wrote it down correctly. He said African-American teens only constitute 16% of the population wow. here in the United States. But they constituted, they make up 69% of all the AIDS cases. So when I tell the young people when I was in school back, when we were in, in high school back in the 1970s, there was no AIDS. And they say, Mr. Sims, it no, it wasn't no AIDS. It did not exist. Yes, there were STDs, but not HIV. 
and AIDS. So I said, you, this, you, I mean, it's dangerous. I mean, you're going to do what you have to do. You, you, the hormones are going wild. You're going to lose your mind. We've all been through that. But you really have to be careful. And since we don't have a lot of, we're not really telling our young people what the real deal is. Okay. And, and it's telling them this is dangerous. Okay. This ain't 1968. We know that. Racism does not exist the way it did 42 years ago, but, but it's, 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 it's structural. It's, it's, it's in the very DNA of America, so we don't see it like my dad did being born in Arkansas in 1933, and, and, and the racism doesn't exist the way it was when I was born right here on the west side, where we are on the west side mm -hmm. in 1962, but it's, it's all still, it's still around us. It's not as bad as it once was, but it's there, and that's why you see the children's pants on the ground the foundation of their pants being on the ground is unadulterated American racism. <laughs>